What's the word y'all, always watching TV, back with another exclusive, you know the vibes, hit the like button if you rocking with the content, drop a comment, let me know what you think, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you stay notified whenever we drop, follow us on all socials at always watching TV, and today, we going down south man, it's looking like Bankroll Freddy supplier has taken a stand on him and gave up some critical details. All right, so it says, the government case against rap artists indicted on federal drug trafficking and weapons charges entered its second day Wednesday with testimony from agents and forensics examiners who worked on the case, as well as a co-defendant who outlined for jurors some of the inner workings of the alleged conspiracy. Bankroll Freddy was indicted in November 2022 on multiple drug and firearm counts including one count of conspiracy to distribute narcotics, two counts of possession of marijuana with intent to distribute, three counts of making false statements to obtain a firearm, two counts of possession of firearms in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime, one count of possession of machine guns, one count of use of a communications facility in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. Alright, so bankroll Freddy of Jonesboro was one of 35 people named in a 35 count indictment and is the only one to go to trial. His co-defendants have all either entered pleas in the matter or have been dismissed from the indictment. On Wednesday morning, FBI Special Agent Jefferson Highfield outlined the procedures followed to gather evidence in the investigation and to keep it secure. One of the FBI analysts who tested one of the pistols seized from Bankroll Freddy during a traffic stop walked jurors through the operation. The agent also explained how the wiretaps that formed the backbone of the investigation were authorized and how they were monitored. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes, man. Jeremy Green, aka JG, who pled guilty March 27 to one count of conspiracy to distribute marijuana and is facing up to a 20 year prison term when he's sentenced, gave jurors a look at some of the inner workings of the operation. Green testified that during his involvement in the conspiracy, he sold between 5,000 and 15,000 worth of marijuana a month on average, and that after meeting Bankroll Freddy at a local recording studio in early 2021, he sold a rapper between 10 and 20 pounds of marijuana on five separate occasions. At the first meeting, Green said the two smoked marijuana together, after which he said he broached the subject of supplying Bankroll Freddy. I kinda asked him if he needed some, Green said. He said he'd try for me if he didn't have any from his normal person. Green said that he would store 20 to 30 pounds of marijuana at a time at a Little Rock townhouse where a third co-conspirator, Aaron A. Nick Nichols, lived at the time. Nichols pled guilty in January to one count of being a felon in possession of a firearm and faces a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison when he's sentenced. He testified that when selling multi-pound quantities to Bankroll Freddy, Green priced his product at $1,600 to $1,800 per pound, typically making about $300 profit per pound. He said that sometimes Bankroll Freddy will pay up front for the marijuana and that sometimes Green will front the marijuana, meaning he would loan Bankroll Freddy the marijuana for no money up front and would collect the money later. He was good for it, Green explained. He had the money. Green also goes on to say he got out of the business of dealing marijuana after he was arrested on October 9th, 2021. He says, I was raided, he explained. It was a warrant and they came to my house. I had realized I was in too deep. Testimony resumes Thursday as the government case continues. Oh man, so Buddy was serving. He got caught up in 2021. Around the same time he met Bankroll Freddy. And it's looking like he started working, man. Because if you got out of the game in 2021, how they still got you selling drugs to Bankroll Freddy after that date? You started working. Now they're saying Bankroll Freddy is the only one out of the 35 people taken into trial. All his other co-defendants took deals. They got caught dead to right. You know, he probably feel like he could take it to the box or go all the way like Rallo. These guys be thinking because his weed it's all good. It's not going to be that serious. But it is kind of serious when you trafficking it and you doing a whole lot of it and you ain't paying your taxes on all that money you was making. Uncle Sam ain't about to play with that. Now, aside from examiners and agents, 
this guy was the first witness they called to the stand, man, and he was his plug. Imagine you buying drugs from somebody, and then the police come lock you up, you decide you're going all the way to trial, and then the first witness they bring out is the guy you was buying the drugs from. Holy moly guacamole, this is nasty work. Dudes want to be meeting up random people in the studio, smoke a blunt, and just right then and there want to take drugs from them or start selling drugs from them. I always thought you test people or create like a barrier where they don't even get directly to you if you don't know them. Seems like he just met this guy, he tried to play it off at first like yeah if my guy ain't on deck I'ma hit you up if I need something but I got somebody but still ended up copping from the guy shortly after man. Oh man it's looking nasty for bankroll Freddy they saying he facing about 20 years cause they got the firearms with the drugs and it's a Rico. But y'all pull up in the comment sections. Let me know what y'all think about this. How y'all feel about this. All my YouTube attorneys, my internet lawyers, I need y'all in the comment sections. Let me know what y'all think about this. How y'all feel about this. The streets is dead, man. You know it's all bad when you plug telling on you. I thought it was the other way around. This nigga is supplying the drugs and still getting on the stand and testifying. Nasty work. As always watching TV, y'all know the vibes. Like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you stay notified. Follow us on all socials at Always Watching TV. And until next time, you know the vibes. I'm out of here.